Hello there, people of the universe. My name is Mike's Fi, and welcome back to the POV of my room that is not the ordinary one. The last time we saw this, in case you didn't see the video, is when I reviewed my new Batfleck cosplay boots. And speaking of cosplay, here we are again, and as well, I did mention in that prior video that sooner rather than later, I would be gaining a 14th Doctor screen accurate cosplay. And lo and behold, As we get back into the Doctor Who videos, I figured we'll start with something simple, pretty sort of bog standard when it comes to Doctor Who YouTube videos, and that is I'm going to go for my top five favourite Doctor Who pieces of merchandise in my collection. So, starting with number five, we've technically got three items, but trust me, there was no way I could pick just one of these, and that is my 10th Doctor Flight Control TARDIS, which amazingly still not only works, but I think it's worth pointing out, it still has the original, can you see that green sticker? Wait. Alongside that amazing TARDIS, I've got my 10th Doctor and Rose Tyler figure. Specifically, these two are my favourite because I got them in 2011 at MCM Birmingham. And ever since then, like, I've gone through dozens and dozens of Ten and Rose figures. So in 2011, when I got this set, or rather my mum spotted it and got it for me, thank you by the way, I made it my mission from that day forth to look after and protect these two. For a lot of the time, they spent their life in the box because these two came in a three-pack set with Cassandra and one or two robot spiders. The joints are still as stiff as if I got it yesterday, which, I don't know, there's something about that that I, that I really like, so... Yeah, that's number five. Moving on to number four. Now, you see, the thing with number four is it's a bit tricky. And when I say tricky, I don't mean tricky as in it's a tricky image seeing a Time Lord with a lightsaber. No, I mean tricky as in I physically can't show it in the shot. So, I'm going to have to show you some B-roll footage. And that is because, my friends, number four is my 10th Doctor TARDIS playset. Now, this thing had everything. Not only did it have doors that opened as you entered into the dimension that was the inside of the TARDIS, but that all aside, my favourite, my absolute favourite thing this playset did was when you whacked the DMAT lever, as well as a few other buttons, the time rotor would go up and down, and the amazing, beautiful, hope-inspiring sound of the TARDIS would ring out. It's an amazing place, and I really hope the amazing console that Shuti Gatwa is going to be using in his tenure as the Doctor, I hope they attempt a playset of that set, because from the leaked images and video we got months ago, spoilers by the way, it looks amazing. Okay, as we get to number three and the technical halfway point, I say halfway because even though there's five items in this list, we are going to have a runner-up, so this sort of six, five and a half, Five and three quarters? Sort of, yeah. You know how I said there would be souvenirs in this list? Well, this is... You'll see a few behind me. I've spent the last couple of hours today and last night sadly taking down some of my form squares. But the positive of sadly taking them down is it means I have more room to put some of my Doctor Who souvenirs and bits back on the wall. I'm not finished yet, but I have put some so far. I'm sure you'll see a few. There's my autograph from K9, me with Sophie Aldred, me with the late great Bernard Cribbins, Billy, David, and specifically those two. I, I'm, I'm so proud that I can say I've met them twice. I do want to just give the number three spot to the first time I met both of them in 2012. Even now, years later, having met them a second time, I still remember that initial joy. I know convention prices of today would blow you away when I say this, but it only cost me 50 quid to get a photo of them. 30 for David, 20 for Billy. But the really mind-blowing part comes next because, um, and for the entire day, speaking to people, like, oh, are you nervous? I was like, yeah, but I, I, I thought I'd processed it because I was nervous, obviously, but I was ready. And then came time for the photo. And then the minute I saw David Tennant. Billy as well, but David Tennant, this man is, was, and always will be an anchor point in my life. For better or for worse, I have always tried to do everything I can possibly, I could possibly do to make the 10th Doctor proud. David Tennant is, and there is no over-exaggeration in this, 
David Tennant has saved my life more times than I am willing to count because it'd take too long. When I saw my doctor in person, there was no way I could have been prepared. So we got to the front. I was still processing it and just trying to keep calm, focus on helping Sammy off the crutches into the picture. She had one arm around David, one arm around Billy. David was here, Billy was here. All went well, and then it was my turn. I stepped up, and I slowly looked up, and I looked, me and David locked eyes, and my my little brain, like, I was looking into the eyes of my hero, the man who was my friend when there was no one else. Before Lucy, before the amazing Mr. Raw, David Tennant's doctor, and Rose were everything to me. And I couldn't help it. I just stepped forward and threw my arms around David and hugged him. And I felt so silly. But when I pulled back, he looked me in the eyes again and said, are you all right? And I remember my heart was racing. It felt like there were two of how loud it was. And Billy put her arm around me as well. They were both so nice, so caring. And then the picture was taken. And it truly was a surreal memory that I will always, always cherish and I am so proud that when the panel happened, I asked a question. I asked about acting. And then I remember being told, that, oh, I was the last question. And I, I remember feeling that this microphone was going to have to be wrestled out of my hand. And I, I, I felt a sense of responsibility. So I remember there was so much I wanted to say to them both. But I, I remember thinking, I want this to be something for everyone. Because I am no doubt one of hundreds of people in that room that feels, that has this special connection to these two. So I basically asked David, would he mind saying Alon Z? And he did it. And I've never felt more proud in my life. And I remember when I came out of the hall, a lady who I, I don't know came up to me and just said, thank you. And I said, it was my pleasure because I'm so proud of it and I hope I can meet him again because the fact we're getting him back for the 60th it means so much to me okay so number two is another souvenir but we're leaning more into the cosplay side and this is my 10th doctor's sonic screwdriver by Roberto replicas now David had multiple Sonics throughout his tenure, but this one is based off the one he used in Series 4 and the specials, which then was later changed to be the one in the 11th hour. When Rubato announced, because Rubato replicas uh, Nick Rubato, he makes the Sonics for the show. He's made Matt Sonic, uh, Peter Sonic, Jody Sonic, and he did make, I'm pretty sure, David's Series 4 Sonic. So... When these became available for fans, there were 300, and I remember thinking, "Oh, I've got, I've got no chance of getting one." But I, I really wanted one, but alas, it wasn't meant to be. But thankfully, nearly just about a year or so ago, maybe I think we're coming up to the year anniversary, or we may have passed it. I'm not sure, and I could not be more, more proud of it. It doesn't have a sound chip, but it does light up because the way Nick would would sell these Sonics is you could get a sound chip or you could negate that and just have the light so that while it is a shame that it doesn't go buzz at the same time with a little bit of movie magic that I will show you not only in my fan series but also here I can do this you see now we are approaching the end of this list but before we get to number one, and believe me, it is a big number one, I have got one specific honourable mention. There was almost two, but when I thought about the second honourable mention, there then became four honourable mentions, and I was like, right, stop, or my whole collection will be an honourable mention. The Doctor Who storybook from 2007, and you can tell how old it is, because it is sadly a little beaten up. Now, this, I remember spending... Oh, it's got my name on it as well. I remember spending every... Oh, and the letter from the doctor. I remember spending so many school breaks, lunches, in the car, home, just reading through this, admiring the art, 
and loving the stories. And this is the first time I've looked at this properly in in a very long time. I, I, I a few weeks ago got it out of the cupboard and was just happy to see the cover. Whereas now I am just reading through it or skimming through it. And, oh, it's amazing. The specific reason it's on this list, though, is specifically this piece of artwork there of the 10th Doctor, and he's pulling his pained face. <laughs> the reason why that image specifically is the reason this book means so much to me, besides the art and the amazing stories and the fact that it has my Doctor and Companion on it. No, when I was growing up and starting out my journeys as cosplaying, I had a few people that I knew in school around that time, uh, in and outside of school, sorry, around that general time, sorry, to be, let me be exact there. I had a lot of people saying that that one frame of him pulling that pain expression, I had people saying it looked like me. And I, I'm pretty sure this book is what spawned the first time anyone said I look like David Tennant. And don't get me wrong, I don't think I do, not one bit. But the fact that I've had even one, and I've had more than one, but the fact that the first time someone gave me that compliment, it was like a, I don't want to be dramatic, well, maybe I do, it was like a blessing, so I'd love to maybe get David and Billy to sign this one day, maybe I might try and tape it up, it is a damn shame that it is a bit battered, but I suppose that's the, the, the blessing or the, the, the happy curse of these things being so old, they, they do get wear and tear and that just shows how old it is, and yeah, it, it, I do love it. I really do. Now, last but not least, we come to number one. And you'd be wrong in thinking it's my coat, even though I did just put that on in a way to make you think that, of course, it's number one. So I suppose what I just said there was redundant. Well, a little bit. Well, sort of, because you are right. But not entirely. Let me just let me just cut through the cheese and get to the cake because no cheese cake cheesecake no 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 don't don't do that. My coat isn't the number one because the number one is what I was already wearing. My tenth Doctor or rather David Tennant Doctor Who cosplay collection. I have got other pieces. I've got an amazing Abbey Shot 7B 11th Doctor purple frock coat. I've got their Series 912. I've got a whole host of different Doctor costumes and I cherish them all. But specifically, my David Tennant one, 10 and 14, because I cherish it all very dearly. Some pieces for different reasons, but there's no one piece that I love more than others. Obviously, my 14 outfit is... 100% screen accurate. My 10 stuff, while a lot of it isn't, it is still incredibly special to me. Like, I will never, I will never say that cosplaying the Doctor is something that you've got to do screen accurate. No, you do it how you want, spend how much you want or how much you don't want, as long as you're happy and you're embodying the Doctor, your Doctor, go for it, whether it's Chris, Paul, Joe, Jody, David, Either one. As long as you're embodying your doctor, go for it. The point is, these pieces of cost, these costume pieces, essay, replica, a complete surprising gift that I'm proud to own. They all help me embody my doctor. And I am so, so proud to own every single piece. It's why this number one spot is kind of a cop out. But that's the thing. I was thinking my 10 coat, because he means this means the world to me. But then the 14 stuff is literally perfect so it, it, it i hope you can forgive the cop out of having the entire collection be number one but that's what it is so yeah that's why i'm gonna leave this video here i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope to read some of your comments tell comments sorry telling me your top five favorite items or maybe just your thoughts on my favorite items whatever i encourage a discussion in the comments as long as it stays positive because I cannot wait to get back into making Doctor Who content, and yeah. So, with that in mind, I hope you guys are well. Thank you guys for watching. Be kind, be good to one another, and I'll see you soon. Allons-y! I'm a living legend. You ain't heard yet, you not get the message. From the moment that I'm stepping in, I get a couple weapons. Yeah, I turn to a beast when I'm repping. I'm a living legend.